In this video, you'll see how Nuage Virtualized Network Services is able to support service chaining of a virtual network function seamlessly with a software-defined wide area network. To recap a previous video, the hosted VNF model that Nuage Virtualized Network Services supports greatly increases the agility of deploying new services and reduces complexity and operational overhead. Supported in conjunction with Nuage's rich set of routing and traffic management features and its abstracted policy model, the integration Nuage provides for VNF deployment enables a highly scalable approach for deploying features and services. Consider a typical deployment of a multi-site SD-WAN VPN deployed across two isolated network underlays managed by the Nuage Underlay Border Router. In a previous video, we covered how to deploy and manage a hosted VNF and saw service chaining internet-bound traffic. In this video, I'll demonstrate how by using the hosted VNF function, we can selectively service chain discrete LAN networks based on specific business requirements. I'll also show you how the Nuage declarative policy model is used to insert the VNF into the data plane and expose the new value-added service on the branch on demand. The traffic can originate from a set of employees who need complete access to other branches. Since they are internal, I do not want to forward their traffic to the firewall. A different set of traffic can originate from partners who are granted access only to certain shared services hosted in the data center. This traffic must be forwarded to the firewall. Finally, we have traffic from guests who are allowed only internet access. This traffic must pass through the firewall for discovery and application of specific URL filters. Using the Nuage policy model, we insert the FortiGate virtual firewall into data path by redirecting our policy selected traffic into the firewall. Logging into Virtualized Services Directory Architect, we see that the three different sources are represented as three subnets in the same domain. Branch 4-1 shows the bridge interface for employee access, Branch 4-2 shows the interface for partner access, and Branch 4-3 shows the interface for guest access. We can also see that the FortiGate virtual firewall deployed on an NSGX at the Branch 4 location is operational. I have also configured the policies at the domain level to enforce the conditions mentioned. Employees are allowed access to all endpoints across all branches, shared services hosted in the data center, and the internet. Both ingress and egress policies are configured to restrict partner access to the shared services hosted in the data center, and guest access to just the internet. However, the virtual firewall is not in the data path as no ingress or egress forwarding policies are configured. Let's send some traffic and make sure the existing configuration is working as expected. I've logged into a client connected to the employee network in the top left terminal and attempted to check connectivity to a resource hosted on a different branch. I'm going to log in to the FortiGate web interface directly from another location. As Nuage is able to centrally connect the VNF management interface into the overlay, we are able to stretch the management network to any location. Using FortiView, we are able to check any traffic that is currently being sent to the firewall. From the Destinations and Sources view, we can see here that the firewall is seeing no traffic. This is expected, as the firewall is not in the data path, since there is no forwarding policy configured to redirect employee-generated traffic. I will now configure an ingress forwarding policy to redirect all traffic originating from partners to the firewall. Using the VSD architect, I create a new ingress forwarding rule group specific to partners. Creating a group gives control to enable or disable the forwarding policies that are applicable just to the partners. I then create a policy entry to target the traffic originating from partners. I do this by selecting the origin location as a policy group that represents the bridge ports corresponding to partners. The destination network is another policy group representing all the shared services deployed in the data center, like web services. I also target all protocol types. Under the Actions tab, I select the redirection target that represents the interface on the FortiGate firewall that is configured to accept traffic from the network. In my case, it is named as branch 4-FW-LAN. Similarly, I create the egress forwarding policies. Like in the ingress policy section, I create an egress forwarding rule group and create the policy entries. Since this is the egress policy entry, I select the shared services policy groups as my origin location and select the policy group that represents the partners as my destination network. Since I am forwarding all traffic to the firewall, I change the protocol to any. 
Under the Actions tab, I select the redirection target, but this time I select the redirection target that represents the interface on the FortiGate firewall that sends the filtered traffic back onto the network. These packets are considered processed by the virtualized functions and are forwarded to its destination. Remember to apply the policy changes that were just created. The virtualized services directory then pushes the new configuration to all the branches affected by the new forwarding rules. I'm going to access a service deployed under shared services. In my case, this is a web server in my data center. While the data is being generated, I will look at the FortiView and look at the data discovered. I can see that the FortiGate firewall is seeing TCP traffic on port 8080 destined to my shared service. The sources view shows only the client that is initiating the connection to the shared service. We were able to successfully insert the FortiGate virtualized services in the data path between the branch and the data center. The firewall now sees all traffic originating from the partner network destined to the shared services. I can continue to tune my FortiGate firewall based on my operational needs. Now I'm going to create similar forwarding policies to redirect all guest traffic destined to the internet to the FortiGate firewall. As before, I will create a separate ingress forwarding policy rule group. I will then create a policy entry selecting the policy group representing the guests as my source. Since I am expecting the guest to have access to the internet, I select the predefined underlay redirect policy group. Select the redirection target that corresponds to the firewall interface that receives traffic from the branch. Create an egress forwarding policy entry to redirect all responses coming back from the internet to the guest network. Select the underlay redirect policy group as the origin and the guest policy group as the destination network. Under the Actions tab, I select the redirection target that corresponds to the interface on the virtual firewall that puts data back on the network. Now I'll attempt to access public sites from a client connected to the guest network. Now that the forwarding policies are created and enabled, we should expect to see traffic traversing the firewall. Looking at the destinations in the FortiView web console, we can now see the traffic being sourced from the guest network and the traffic destined for the internet. We can see a mix of web and DNS traffic. Now I can tune my URL whitelist based on the discovered data in the firewall. And with that, a VNF firewall is in the data path. During this demonstration, I have shown the Nuage approach to VNF value-added service enablement. Leveraging Nuage Virtualized Services Platform, our VNF support is agile, open, secure, and scalable. For more information, visit nuagenetworks.net forward slash VNS. Thank you.